Let's take a look at the basics of global illumination. And to do that, we're going to use one of the projects that's provided. And as you can see here, this is a nicely lit scene. You come over here and you look, and you'll notice that none of the lights are on, like the key light or the rim, because this is being driven by global illumination. Now, global illumination is great. It does a lot of things, but it also has to have its own source. Uh, anything that's dark really is not going to give you any illumination. This happens to be driven by two images outside the windows that have their self-illumination jacked up. Now, this is just one prop here. So if you're not used to iClone, what you have to do in that case is use your color picker on your textures to go get to that prop. And you may think you're clicking on it and not actually be clicking on the prop because there may be something invisible in front of it. So sometimes you may have to drill down to it by getting in closer or just finding it if it's, if it's you know, properly uh, labeled, which a lot of times it's not, particularly in older props, because nobody really expected you to dig down to this level when some of these props were made. But this is the window, and what I'm going to do is shut down the illumination on it. Then I'm going to come over here to the other window so we can see what's going on. We'll go back in the room, turn on the global illumination, and now we can use the self-illumination to show you how it works. All this is emanating from that image in the back. So you got a lot of control right there, and that's just one light source. Now we'll go ahead and turn that self-illumination back down. Let's just put it on about one. And if you can't see what you're doing while you're working, you can always come in and just turn on one of the lights to see what you're doing. But what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, click on the living room, go into the textures, and I'm going to grab the body of one of these candles. Because you can make anything a light source as long as it's not too dark. We'll come in here and we'll pick up, pick up, excuse me, self illumination. You can already see there how it's adding some light, but I don't want that to just completely wash out. So we'll just put that up a little ways and come on up to the self uh, illumination scale and increase that. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the red candle. Soap illumination. Not too much. And then go to the illumination settings and mix in some of that red. Now since that is a texture, we can use our bucket to do the second one here. And the cool thing about this is we can turn anything, like I said, into a light source like that picture or even this pillow cushion so that should turn the light bulb on over your head for several things because that really opens up what you can do now let's grab a particle like a torch a torch light will bring it in and you notice it doesn't drive anything right away that's because you have to come over and tell it, you have to come over and turn on the illumination. And now you can use this to control how much it illuminates. But now you need to remember one thing. If you use the torch that was a light tool, You've got to remember, it already has its own built-in lights. This was what came with iClone 6. So if you want it to just be lit by the particles, you'll need to come in and turn off those lights and then go to, like, your smoke particle, hit your illumination, and do the same thing to the torch particle. And then you'll have it lighting up 
with just the particles and get a little bit of flickering as you'll notice here and things like that. Now that's just with the light tool. Now as you'll see in another project that they have, it can also be driven by the television. And the reason this television is not driving it right now is because it has this black color over it. As soon as we take that off, you'll notice it starts driving its own light, it has its own light source. We can also drag over an image on it. And then all you have to do is play with the combination of self-illumination and this. And as you can see, you're getting quite a bit of control here between these light sources. We don't really have a light bulb on anywhere, but we already have multiple light sources. Now you notice there's also some built-in lights up here. Depending on how things are made, if you can get to those lights, if you can get to that texture, you can turn it into a light. Now, this one I'm pretty sure is actually 58, because I've done this before. It is 58, it's just there's two 58s. So that's that texture. Now we'll give it some self-illumination. And now we can actually use it to illuminate some of the room. So now you can turn non-functioning lights into actual lights with global illumination. Now let's take what we've done here. Let's go into the visual tab. Ambient occlusion is already on. And let's turn on the HDR effect. And you'll notice it's already improving our picture. So all that we did before didn't even involve any of this. And there's several different settings within here. And of course, you know, most of us are familiar with this. Now, if you're going to use IBL, you have to be careful because it can wash it out. But like anything else, it can also be a great enhancement. Uh, the GI Direct Light, it does add quite a bit more lighting. So that would just be up to you whether you want to use it or not. But as you can see, this is a, a unique, not a unique way, just a great way of lighting and a, actually more of a mainstream way of lighting things where we can use anything we want as a light source. Also, when you bring in other characters and things, you may find inadvertently that their eyeballs were self-illuminated or something like that and they're giving you a light source you didn't mean to have. You'll learn to drill down and find those things and turn them off. But hopefully this will show you just the power that real is putting into your hands. Now what you might want to do to add a little more realism would be to go in and actually turn on your key light so that once you turn it on you get your shadows. And of course you're going to want to come over and probably just set it down to like 0.2. But you'll notice this way you at least get your shadows back. 